Nice work, Bone Daddy. Oh, check me out, Bone Daddy. WTF, WTF. Hello, how you doing? Come on in, take your shoes and socks off. I am Bone Daddy from Cultaholic.com. You are a sexual wang pheasant, and welcome to all the WTF moments from this week's WWE SmackDown Live, which after last week's Monday Night Raw, which was absolutely piss and terrible, after last week's SmackDown Live, which was just about as bad, and after this week's Monday Night Raw, which was an absolute abomination, was actually quite good. Bit of improvement there. Well done, everyone. We kick things off with many, 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 many cultaholic signs at last night's show, so thank you very much to Maggie Welty, a bearded man, a rogue cultaholic in the crowd, and find to Paul Daly, who tried to get one in there, but they wouldn't allow it because it said sexual wank pheasant of all the things to not allow in the arena, eh? The Peach! Charlotte and Becky in the ring at the same time. Remember when those three ladies debuted as part of a faction called the Submission Sorority? That's funny because, and I need to refer to my notes here, because Submission Sorority is also the name of a series of porn videos called Here's Her, produced by Bang Bros. And if you're wondering, these videos were apparently about college girls hazing pledges in extremely non-TV PG ways. And I need to read that out there just to make sure not only that I got it right, but to also make sure that you know I'm not into that kind of thing. Imagine if I stood here and recited all of that off the top of my head, I would have looked like just about as big a weirdo as the producer who came up with that name backstage. Charlotte, what are you doing? So Becky Lynch rightfully said in the opening segment to last night's Smackdown Live that in doing what she did to Ronda James Cuthbert Rousey, Charlotte Flair didn't realise who she was because she was channeling the man. Charlotte then replies, what are you talking about, pal? I was being me, Charlotte Flair. Woo, 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 you know it. Now, pardon me, Charlotte Flair, but I've got to say your promo on last week's Smackdown Live was a can of orange paint and a lovely little Irish accent away from being Becky Lynch. It was blatant. It was as clear as day. Those who put last week's show together saw Becky Lynch's name in the opening segment slot and thought, bloody hell, we'll cross it out, put Charlotte Flair, no one knows because wrestling fans are idiots. We're not really, though, so we did. That's why I'm doing it now. Made a great mistake, Corey. And next up, we have Corey Graves claim that Ronda Rousey hasn't felt dominance before like she did against Becky Lynch. Now I'm just wondering myself, what the hell did Holly Holm and Amanda Nunes do to her if that wasn't dominance? What was it then, Corey? Bit of kinky foreplay? I don't think so, pal. They sparked her out. Charlotte, what are you doing again? So on last night's SmackDown Live, Charlotte Flair claimed that she wasn't fighting for Becky Lynch in Survivor Series, despite the fact that on the SmackDown before Survivor Series, Charlotte Flair definitely did claim that she was fighting for the man, Becky Lynch. Or could she have meant that she was fighting for herself since she's so blatantly stolen the man's gimmick? Naomi, one of those! You look like you've stuck your shins in Pelican Crossings, pal, and I know that because I'm stood here with a shirt that says Maggle three times, so I definitely know fashion, okay? Ha 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 Look at her face. She's absolutely gutted and it's absolutely fantastic this is how it feels charlotte flair this is how it feels to have a one-on-one -on -one championship shot ripped away from you for no good reason whatsoever <laughs> i'm unbearable aren't i you know how it goes charlotte just like how you got that shot at summerslam for no good reason whatsoever taking that opportunity away from our darling becky lynch oh, oh yeah medicine it tastes so sweet doesn't it sweet like the sweat of shane muck sweaty bollocks oh, hope you enjoy it pal Jeff Hardy's 20th anniversary celebration. I didn't realise it was 2014. Now, as we all know, Jeff Hardy debuted in WWE on May the 23rd, 1994, in a match against Razor Ramon, where he wrestled under the name of Keith Davis. That's right, Jeff Hardy, the charismatic enigma, the air humper. Keith Davis. Of course, who sounds like he has the most boring job in IT you've ever heard of in the history of the world before he goes home, cooks a microwave meal for one every single piss night of the week before wasting his life away playing Warhammer or whatever that crap is. Anyway, I bet that since it was under a different name all the way back in 1994, WWE will tell us it was a different man or an obsolete vessel. And anyway, to throw that theory completely out the window, go back to October the 6th, 1997, Raw is war where you will see the Young Bucks. I mean, the Hardy Boys, build as the Hardy Boys, get assaulted by Kane Seek and Shove. That 20th anniversary bollocks, right up your whisper in the wind, pals. Now, I know that most of you would have been singing Dun, 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 While the Usos were making their reckless because the SmackDown Live logo was showing when it shouldn't have been showing. But after Survivor Series, the night where the Usos took part in a real wrestling match inside of a real wrestling ring with real other professional wrestlers, they've won that match for SmackDown Live. I think they've got every right to claim that they are SmackDown Live since every other one of the compadres lost the match and proved that utter cockwombles. What is on Jey Uso? 
Uso's hands. He puts his hand out for the fans to touch you. Lady in the blue there touches his hand and almost immediately goes, on our good pal next door. Now, if anybody has any information as to what is on Jay Uso's hands, please let me know in the comments below because I really want to know. And also, I kind of get out of my head that Jay and Jimmy Uso might be the modern day incarnation of the sticky bandits, Harry and Marv. So then, many, 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 many times on last night's SmackDown Live, the Tron made a massive whoopsie, so let's just wrap them all up into one lovely little point and show you what happened in the production truck every single time that Tron made a whoopsie. Dun, 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 And now it's time for this. Wankity wank, wankity wank, wankity wank, wankity wank. Wankity wank, wankity wank, wankity wank. Hello everybody and welcome to Wankity Wank and thank you very much to Derek Williams for pointing out something that sounds really clever. I don't know if it's right, but it sounds clever, so it's in there. And next up we have AJ Styles talking about just how unhappy he was with the way he lost the WWE Championship two weeks ago. You see, when I became WWE Champion, I knew there would be a target on my back, but who knew that target would have moved somewhere else before he looked at his little winky? Well now, come on, Alan, if you hadn't worked out there was a fixation on SmackDown Life with your cock and bollocks after the Shinsuke Nakamura feud, you deserve to lose your WWE Championship in the way that you did. Just wear a cup, man, please. We've been saying the same thing for many months now. Just wear a bloody cup. Do you also know it was for the shot? Now you see this potentially really good match between my Bane Spirit Arnold Rusev and a really good wrestler called Shinsuke Nakamura? Well, we at WWE, we're going to tell you you're going to have it, and then we're going to rip it away, just because we can. Take that, you filthy set of marks. So then, we're sat down, we've got our popcorn, ready for some good grabs between Shinsuke Nakamura and my Bane Spirit Arnold Rusev, but then Nakamura attacks Rusev and then runs away. How is that productive at all? Hang on a second. Yeah, boy, he's a goodie. And he's wearing a shirt belonging to two bloody baddies, you flaming a lot. How can that be? We see it all the time in WWE. The heels stick with the heels and the baby faces stick with the baby faces. That's why Drew McIntyre, big bully bastard Baron Corbin, and Lashley are a thing on Raw. And why up until last night, Debar and The Big Show were a thing on SmackDown Live, isn't it? That there is unprecedented. Mago, 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 mago. Is he lost? Hang on a second there. Little yellow trunks, little yellow kick pads, horrible tattoos, a bit of black hair, a skinny little body, CM Punk on WWE TV in 2018, grab all of the animals, take them all away now and run for the borders. I've had a coffee today, mind Jesus Christ. The end is nigh, the end is nigh, time to run away, the end is nigh, nigh. So hang on a second there, we have Samojo who is spitting bare Becky Lynch. Fire. Right into the face of Jeffrey James Cuthbert Hardy before he claims that he doesn't believe in second chances, especially when people like him haven't even had their first. What planet are you on, pal? You had four chances at AJ Styles' WWE Championship and you pissed it up every single time. And men like you haven't had their first chance. No way, Jose. You don't say, do you? We know this statement has to be correct because they say all men are created equal. But you look at me and you look at Samoa Joe and you can see that statement is not true. Yeah, fat. And back we go to Jeffrey James Cuthbert Hardy who claims that despite the fact he's almost ended his career on 20 separate occasion, he still always lives for the moment. No, pal, that's Matt Hardy version one. You're the one who has no more words or something. Do you get it? Because it's the name of the theme songs. Good. Tom Phillips, will you remove your nose from the best arsehole in the world, please? Yes, sat there saying, oh, Shane McMahon didn't wrestle on last week's Smart and Live while the Miz did because Shane McMahon, who of course is the best professional wrestler in the planet world, took so much punishment at Survivor Series. Oh, isn't he so brave? Oh, I wish he was my sweaty boyfriend. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, Tom Phillips, but the punishment you're talking about at Survivor Series 2018 came in the form of many, many, many coast to coast and an elbow drop off the top rope through Braun Strowman and through the announce table. Now, I must have missed the time when that flashy prick was full to make those moves part of his repertoire. What I'm saying is, Shane McMahon, who of course is the best professional wrestler in the planet world, did all of that punishment to himself and then couldn't wrestle a couple of days later. Best in the world. Best in the world at writing sick notes, am I right? Sick burn. And now it's time for this again. Wankity wank, wankity wank, wankity wank, wankity wank. Wankity wank, wankity wank, wankity wank. Hello, and welcome back to Wankity Wank, and hello, and welcome back to one Flim who points out something about the Marine films, films I've never seen before, so I don't know if it's true or not. Oh, here we go, Tom Phillips, once again, this time get your ears out of the bossiest arsehole in the world. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. So Tom Phillips is going radio rental and currently saying no, the Miz didn't fight 3-1 and against New Day. He fought 1-1 and against Kofi Kingston. At, at which point Vince McMahon must have said something to him on the headset, which forced Tom out of absolutely nowhere to say yes, sir. Yes, sir, what? What did Vince say to you, Tom? Let's imagine it now. Hey, Felipe, was that you on the plane? I love it. <laughs> Corey Graves, how the hell can Becky Lynch's championship advantage have blown up in smoke the second that Asuka made that match at TLC a triple threat? It was always going to be a TLC match because Pete said so! 
even before Asuka was added to the equation, TLC matches, of course, have no disqualifications. So work that one out for us there, Corey. I really am sorry about today's episode. I had a cup of coffee just before I came to the studio and I'm off my bloody tits. <laughs> but I've been Ross from Cultaholic.com. Thank you for being a sexual wang pheasant. Testing times these, I know, but Smackdown Live showed a glimmer of hope because it was a little bit better than last week's. We'll take what we get here on WTF Moments. See you next week. Follow me on Twitter at Ross on Wrestling. Pledge to our Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash cultaholic. Aim for the givers, we greatly appreciate it and I love you personally forever. But most importantly of all, Follow us on all of the social media channels we have because they're the best.